When you're painting your trim, we want you to think twice before opting for default white. Now this is an important tip when you're painting your house. So for this master bedroom and dressing room, we chose this wallpaper and it's this grass cloth wallpaper. It's actually a synthetic, but it's this soft blue. Now most people just paint the trim, baseboard, casing, crown molding white. You don't have to do that and I prefer not to. What we did was we chose a color that's compatible to the wallpaper. So we did it on the baseboard, the trim, and even the door and the crown. Not only does it sort of calm the space, but it makes the space seem taller. So your color goes right from the floor, right to the ceiling, elongates the space. Now in this area here used to be a dressing table, but we needed the storage. So what we did with these built-ins, and because we're in a small area leading to the walk-in closet, we mirrored the top and did this Chippendale fretwork. Again, painted the same color as the trim, so it looks like a beautiful piece of furniture, but recedes into the wall. Now I don't know if you can see the distinction. The trim was actually a gray, and you say you never paint trim white. Never paint them white. We always paint them the color, and we usually, I usually paint the trim the color of the walls. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's a little more contemporary look, yes. even for a very traditional space. Yeah. And when I paint the baseboard and the wall and the crown the same color, it always makes the space look taller. Now places where people yeah. should definitely think about painting uh, the trim the same color, you mentioned baseboards. If you've got the teeny tiny well, baseboards, significant. Exactly. exactly. Why emphasize? Paint it Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And, and sometimes you want to draw attention to something like maybe there's a crown molding or there's an architectural mm -hmm. detail that you want to, to stand out, then that might be the place for the white when there's nothing else white. Yes. Right. But you have to really make look at that and say, do I really want this element to pop? Right. And if it's not a major element, just paint it all out. Paint it okay, out. Okay, so there are certain circumstances where you can see white working. What would those be? Sometimes even a mantle. Yes, okay. exactly. Because Sometimes we'll do a fireplace mantle. Out. It's a beautiful yeah. mantle and nice detail. Well, we might paint everything else a color and then yeah. paint that white. Yep. Okay. But quite often people don't have anything white in the space and they just automatically think, oh, my ceiling must be white and my trim must be white for, for no reason. It, it, so when you actually look around your space and go, yeah, actually I don't have any white. Why do I want to paint it white? Because exactly. suddenly you're going to draw attention to these things that you don't want to draw attention to. But I think a, a mantle is really nice. And even then though, I find often with people, I'll bring out the whites when I'm choosing a white for them and they're surprised. It's like there's a couple of oh, hundred yes. whites. So I'm not just going to pick the default ready-made white. I'm going to pick something that ties in with the overall tone of the overall color exactly. palette that you've used exactly. in the space. So this doesn't surprise me at all, but of course in your laundry room, you did not go with white. No, I did not. We've got a picture <laughs> of that, and we know that you're good with color, uh, even though a lot of us do stick with what we know, which is white. So do you, I don't know if you know the exact color Actually, that is, but you can see it's a darker gray. It's overcoat, funny enough, which oh, is the gray overcoat. that we showed in the cabinets earlier. Yeah. Um, so, and again, it tied in with sort of the tile. When you look down on, on the floor tile, mm -hmm. again, the, the base board going all the way around they didn't really want that to jump out that much mm -hmm. yeah so I wanted it to blend in more with the floor and then I did a wall with overcoat just around the um, uh, the, the hot door, water the, tank the exactly water just tank. to kind of hide that so it's a bit of an accent right as well nice now if people are going to consider an, a color that is not white which is very daring for many of us <laughs> what do you base it on because you also don't want to pick a color out of the sky and it, it, exactly. that doesn't match anything else in the room for the trim for the trim. I usually base it on the wall. So you mm -hmm. just so if I pick a it color, out. So if I were doing a wall to match this, let's say the sofa was this gray and I chose a gray like this, I would mm -hmm. either paint it the same color or do a lighter gray. It would be a graded version. And even when we pick whites, what we were talking about, right. there are hundreds so of whites. Many. If you look at the Benjamin Moore fan deck, there are gray whites, blue whites, warm whites, mm -hmm. pink whites. So you want to pick a white that has a cast of the wall color. So if your wall is beige, you want to go to a warmer oh, white. Mm -hmm. And if your mm -hmm. wall is a gray, you want to go a cooler white. There's right. a big difference. And even ceilings, I don't really paint. Just, just a standard white. white. People say, what's your white for ceilings? It depends what the wall is. Yeah. Right. So I'll get the context. I think color is never in isolation. And if you can think about that, and then it's always it's always customized to your space. Right. Not even just your whole house, but each individual room sometimes. Make it, it work for white. you, right? Absolutely. Okay, let's see the uh, laundry room now, Sharon. So we saw one see. picture of it. It looks great now, but it didn't start out that way. Yeah. So take a look. <laughs> This laundry room has been needing a big makeover. And as you can see, we finally got started. Now I really wanted to hide this hot water heater. So we're putting up a wall. It's gonna make it seem a little bit smaller, but I think with the addition of some tiles and a new paint color in here, it's gonna look just fantastic. 
I'm so excited I finally have a laundry room that I don't mind spending time in. Now, my favorite part is this nice large area to fold the clothes. This was really inexpensive. I just painted a piece of MDF with buttered yam, my favorite orange. Now, I kept things pretty simple. I went with an inexpensive um, modern cabinet in a back painted glass and some storage area. I went all white, so it kind of ties in with the appliances. For the wall color, I used Gray Owl, which is a nice light, light, light blue-gray, so it just has a little tint of color. And then on the floor, I used an inexpensive ceramic tile in a mosaic, and then matched one of the grays to create my baseboard color in Windy City. Brought that same color onto the wall, and it kind of matches the curtains that hides my hot water heater. Now over here, this is what inspired my whole palette, this vintage sign that I picked up at the Brimfield Antique Market in Massachusetts last year. You know what, I love to have at least something in each space that tells a fun story. <laughs> okay, so you, you get this beautiful laundry room and then Flood alert! Yeah, you know, there's a flood in the basement. <laughs> Just my luck. Um, the irony is, when we did the laundry room, we designed it, my husband like, um, chipped out the concrete floor to get a nice slope down to this big beautiful bronze drain. Oh nice. Did the flood happen there? No. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. In the finished basement, <laughs> in the rec room. Oh no. So everything, yeah. Ruined. Ruined, yes. Yeah, so it's Everything all... but that, that the laundry, laundry room, the laundry room looks, looks great. great. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good thing. I should thing. put the big screen TV in the laundry room and we'll Save sit around her. there. Save Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you did a great job on that.